Peggy 18. Welcome back to one of our infamous Snap Map streams. And the next map we're going to look at is called, um, I'm going to say this correctly, Dash Isolation Colon <laughs> Evil Unleashed Dash, which is by R W Y E A S N T, which I'm not down with the kids anymore. When you say it, it might actually be something really cool and smart. <laughs> but I, I don't know what it is, but it's a great map. So yeah, this is a, another map that has some really cool, it's a, it's a very moody map. You walk very slowly and you have these explosions happening. Um, you have monsters like behind this door here that, uh, you know, spawn, it sounds like a monster spawned in and then the, the door opens up on you and there's just a pile of jibs and blood like, hmm, okay, that's weird. Uh, and then rooms filled with spooky, you know, kind of sound effects stuff. It's a very moody map, which is a really cool kind of thing to see. Uh, and the way you do a lot of those is pretty straightforward. You have a box trigger that spawns a hazard. Um, that one's pretty easy. This one here is a little more complicated. The, the monster event that he's got here is a box trigger that hurts a lost soul, gives him 3,000 damage, which guarantees that it's going to jib him. And that happens behind that locked door. So you hear all the sound effects and you hear everything happen, which is pretty slick. And then here we just have a room. He's got a room full of bad guys which takes you a little while to find in the map, but they make a bunch of noise, so you have this kind of spooky, where are these monsters coming at you from? Uh, next up, he's got this really cool sequence where you have to hold left trigger to run, uh, and it's like an amnesia monster type experience, where you have to hide behind the boxes, and oops, if you don't hide behind the boxes, they spot you, and you've, you have no ammo, so you basically, you're hosed, you have to run for it, and it's, uh, it's pretty tense. And then there's another sequence here where you, okay, well, you successfully hide behind the boxes. And the cool part is if you get all the way through the map, after running from monster, he gets to the very end and it says, ooh, that was close. But here, if you hide successfully, you know, monster goes and runs off and then, whew, coast is clear. Okay, you move on. So pretty cool little sequence there where it feels like you, you can't fight. You have to actually, you know, uh, avoid the monster or if you spot him, you got to run away from him. So very similar setup here. We've got this player input um, in the very beginning that's detecting when the player pulls on the weapon mod and then it modifies the speed down to 45% um, at the beginning of the level. Later on, he changes that speed up to a higher percentage. But then on the map spawning, he says 45% as well. So your speed is about half your normal rate. Uh, and then as you come into that room and he enables that input where you can uh, press weapon mod and go faster, um, he tests to see if we're at the point where you can run here with a bull variable and then sets the modifier, boom, now you can run 80%. So you can actually do your running, which is pretty cool. So it's a neat trick uh, to make custom input happen inside this level. And then when you release uh, on that input, it sets you back to 45%. So pretty cool way to be actually modifying player speed, uh, like you've got a button that you have control over. And then once you get into that room, this, this room's pretty complicated. There's a lot of logic in here, but you know, he hit that trigger and he says, quick, hide behind the boxes. And immediately what he does is he shows that monster. And then what that monster does is as soon as he spawned in, follows these path points. And then there's kind of the, the logic in the room that determines whether you've hidden or not. He's got a repeater that hits five repeats. Uh, and every time it loops, it adds to this counter that's waiting till five. And so you have basically five seconds to take cover. And if you don't, he sets this variable to true that you didn't hide. And then kind of the uh, proverbial stuff hits the fan and now you're in trouble and you, he basically does a whole pile of cool stuff where he tests this bull at the same time and then goes over to this bigger Christmas tree of content over here on the right where he does all kinds of nasty stuff to you where it starts some music, it spawns an encounter and all the stuff that you saw when you got and when you actually didn't hide. Um, this is a neat trick I haven't seen done before. He's got this angry revenant hitting behind, hidden behind this wall and every time he shoots you it doesn't hurt you and if every time he hits that wall it teleports him back in the room. So pretty cool, he's got this trigger and a player blocking volume. The blocking volume blocks you and it blocks the rockets from the Revenant. And then this trigger is set to only work for AI, which is neat because what happens is only when the AI runs through that trigger um, will the teleports happen. So it's a neat little trick where every time the Revenant runs into the trigger because he's gonna wanna come kill you, it just boop, beams him back into the room into various random locations, which is pretty cool. It's a neat, it's a neat trick and it 
it's kind of unnerving when you come across it. This map, like I said, you're moving really slowly and it's really dark and spooky and then boom, like, oh, here comes this monster that just runs across right in front of you. And that's the first time you see this Baron and it's, it's pretty hectic. So the way you set that up, he's got a box trigger. He's called it enemy run. He's actually labeling triggers. As soon as you enter it, he hurts this demon, which is kind of weird. Like, why do you want that? Well, you don't want to beam that demon in. You just want to hurt him so he's already there. And the cool part of being, him being already there is that uh, as soon as you hurt him, he can start his logic. And so what he's doing here is this demon's already there and he spawned and he's just going back and forth between these points until he's hurt. And once he's hurt, he follows that path point and runs across the screen. So it keeps it where you don't have to have the demon beam in. He just runs across right away, which is pretty cool. And then here is one of my favorite sequences. This really surprised me. He has this talking demon rune where you're having a creepy conversation with this demon rune where it's yammering at you like, oh, now I've got a name. And you're having this inner monologue again. He does this neat little trick where he plays uh, like a hi-hat sound whenever you're talking to yourself. And then the demon oh. rune continues to talk trash to you. Uh-oh. You know, so it's a fun <laughs> sequence. I'll just let it play out. Uh, and then we'll go into logic about it here in a second. And I'm very proud of this map author because it didn't look like a lot of misspellings. There's a lot of misspellings that happen in Snap, but these oh. are all they're solid. But yet the logic in here is a, is, a, is, a, is a lot of stuff. And it looks really complicated, but it's actually pretty straightforward when you dig into it. He's got this demon rune that only AI can pick up, so that'll keep you from turning into a demon, uh, and it makes it just a talking rune. It's a similar thing that we saw with the last logic we looked at with the flag, and there's that demon rune. And then uh, he's got all these little uh, world texts in here that are stacked up on top of each other, um, which is really, you know, it, it's not that you can do it in different ways. You could do strings that change and each have one world text if you're running into, into memory limitations, but this is a really easy way to just kind of get it done and you can see it all. So you can see I'm breaking out all the logic here and looking at it. And then uh, the way he does it is as you enter this trigger, um, he starts a bunch of timers, and then these timers, when they're finished, go to the show this world text and show a message. So it's just kind of a sequencing event to make all that happen. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, and then here is this really cool sequence here. This is, I call this the Death Star Trench, where he's avoiding all these uh, uh, fires, which is it's a really fun sequence. And what you have to do is put this power core in here and spawn a bunch of smoke. And as soon as that happens, it actually uh, kills that Baron off which is a neat way to, uh, it's a neat sequence that we hadn't seen before for someone to kill off a Baron. He didn't do anything uh, with weapons because yeah. he didn't have no ammo. He just gets killed off by this smoke, smoke stuff. So here's that room and he's doing this neat trick. Here's this problem. He has this Baron chasing you and you don't know where it is throughout the level. So we use this filter uh, to find the Baron of Hell, which is a neat piece of advanced logic where you find a filter to find the exact monster you're looking for. And then what he's doing is as soon as you give that power core, um, to that station, he's got a whole lot of logic happening here, which I'm looking at real closely. And then if you kind of look in here, we're going to peek at it. He's setting some modifiers, he's stopping some music, starting some different music, clearing a point of interest. There's a whole lot of cool stuff going on here, but the really important piece, he's turning on a whole bunch of hazards, which is all that smoke. Um, but the, the important piece is that logic that is trying to find that demon no matter where he is in the level. It's not this room, it's not whatever. He finds a repeater that iterates through all the AI in the level and then it only iterates through that one monster using that filter and then does 2,000 damage to him and blah, that's it, he's dead. Which is a really cool way, you could be in that room, you could be elsewhere, you could be anywhere in the level and by using that AI filter and then iterating through all the AI using the AI iterator and the AI proxy, you can kill that one demon, even if you had 50 zombies or a whole bunch of other monsters in the level, you can iterate through and just wipe, wipe out that one demon using that kind of logic. So it's pretty advanced stuff and it's cool to see people starting to, to settle on some of the more advanced logic uh, now in, in levels like this.